department, uh, the Association to Preserve Cape Cod has been um, uh, promoting and supporting uh, volunteer herring counts uh, for several reasons. Uh, the state and federal fisheries agencies don't have enough information on the populations of river herring. And river herring are disappearing, their populations are low and are still low, and there's been a ban on their fishing and catching since 2006. Uh, and scientists are still studying the reasons why their numbers are still low. It could be overfishing at sea, it could be overfishing uh, on land, it could be poor water quality, or it could be barriers that keep them from migrating uh, up onto the ponds where they spawn. Um, any number of things. So they're, they're uh, actually a very sensitive species because they spawn and lay their eggs in fresh water and ponds and rivers. Uh, and then the young uh, go out to sea and they spend three or four years out in the ocean uh, growing big, eating seafood. <laughs> and then they return after three to four years as adults and spawn in the ponds again. So during the meal, they're exposed to all the hazards in the ocean, as well as the hazards running up through the streams and ponds. Um, now these people are thinking about water pollution as a possible effect, as well as overfishing of the adults and so forth. So uh, we need more information on their populations. Uh, the third reason that we uh, like to have these herring counts is that it uh, helps us to collect that scientific information. Uh, you're actually collecting valuable data, and that's called citizen science. And in this case, the data, the counts, are actually used, uh, not just by nonprofit organizations like us, uh, but also by the state and federal fisheries agencies. We expect the herring to start running anytime soon, and uh, uh, the actual volunteer herring count will start around April 1st or whenever the first herring are seen and it will go until June 1st or whenever there are no more herring left uh, migrating upstream. So in the town of Mashpee, uh, there are three important herring runs. Uh, the Mashpee River, which is this river right here. Um, one of the most important and biggest herring runs on the Cape um, is the Mashpee River. And then there's also the Quashnet River. And the place where the count is done is up at uh, the north end of John's Pond. And the third site, which is also a very important large run, is Sentuit Pond. And um, that uh, run, uh, the dam and fishway were uh, fixed in 2013. Um, as part of a big restoration project, and so that um, should be a large run about, uh, about the size of the Mashpee River. Uh, something to think about with uh, river herring is that unlike salmon, uh, after they spawn, they don't die. Um, very good. Uh, <laughs> uh, they actually return back to the sea and their lifespan is about eight years or so. So they return to spawn three to about two to three times in their lifetime. So when you see um, river herring migrating in that direction towards uh, the ponds, they're <coughs> going to spawn. And later on, probably in May, you'll start to see them going in that direction, out towards the ocean. You may see them slipping backward. In other words, they may be facing this way, but moving like this. Uh, we're going to only be counting the adult herring moving upstream uh, between April 1st and June 1st. But after they spawn and lay their eggs and the eggs are hatched out, uh, the young juveniles, which are they start out being very, very, very small, and they grow to maybe a couple of inches or about that length. Um, the young herring will start to migrate out to the sea beginning in early July, and it'll, it'll continue through the fall. And if you're lucky, if you come here, um, especially on warm days, you see schools of tiny fish migrating down. It's likely that they're river herring. And I've seen them in um, streams, uh, on, uh, in other streams, uh, literally, you know, 
thousands passing by at a time. It's quite impressive when it happens. But that will start to happen in, say, late June, early July. It'll continue through the summer, it might fall off a bit. And then in the fall, um, it may pick up again. Um, generally, it stops in November or so. <clears throat> and the nice thing about monitoring herring is that it doesn't need to be done at the same time each day by a person. Uh, in fact, it's actually better if the counts are done at random times. That means pretty much any time and not at the same time each day. But what we like are some counts in the morning and some counts in the afternoon. So morning anytime between 7 and noon and afternoon anytime between noon and 7. Um, the way it's done is that uh, usually what we like to do is, this is a count kit, very simple, there should, there will be a second thermometer. This is a clicker counter, you've probably seen this before, and this is a water thermometer. So uh, when you do a count, and I'll show you in a minute, always put your uh, finger through the ring so that you don't drop it in the stream, that's happened, and <laughs> make sure that this is set to zero so that you start off with zero, whoops, okay, and put your finger through it so that, and then make sure that it's seated in your hand, you're going to look over at the run, and you're, we're going to count the number of fish passing over the board, um, going in that direction, um, so like this, and it's pretty easy, <laughs> every time you see a fish, um, just click, so, and you do that for 10 minutes. Um, it's an exercise in patience to stand there for 10 minutes sometimes. And I want to emphasize that the goal is not to measure the greatest number of fish. The goal is to measure or count the number of fish in your 10 minute period, even if it's zero. Zero is a really valuable number. Um, it tells us when there are no fish running, and as soon as we get numbers, you know, that's the start of the run. Um, at some runs where there are very few fish, uh, fortunate not mash peat, what it tells us is that there are problems that need to be fixed. So zero is a valuable number. After your 10 minutes are done, uh, you write it down on your data sheet. And then uh, what you do is you take the water thermometer, which is on a string, and take the water temperature. And we'll go over and do this shortly, but we'll leave this thermometer in the water for about 20 or 30 seconds to let it equilibrate. Uh, this is weighted. And uh, this is in degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And we do that because the because we're scientific. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the software program that takes our count data uh, is geared towards uh, Celsius. And if I get any numbers back in Fahrenheit, um, it'll take that much more time to convert it. So keep that in mind. So as soon as we pull it up out of the water, read it quickly because it will start changing. The reason we measure water temperature is that herring um, tend to like to migrate upstream when the water temperature reaches about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit and they'll continue migrating up and spawning and we're told by the Virginia Marine Fisheries that when the water temperature starts to get above 20 later in May typically it's getting warm uh, they tend to stop migrating so somewhere in that 10 to 20 degrees Celsius range is when the herring like to migrate upstream. So that's why we <coughs> monitor the water temperature. You see water quality changes. Say, for example, the water becomes very cloudy or brown or 
dark green that's interesting to us. Um, it's not something that goes into uh, account data, but we keep track of it. We actually use it. We're uh, working on thinking of a way to use the water quality data from the herring counts to give us information on uh, the state of the Cape's waters. Uh, so, some people have even noted uh, birds, rare species, and whatnot. So, you can use the comments for whatever you think you, know, you uh, observe. Just keep it short. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. If you see that the water, that the water level is changing a lot, or if you see problems with uh, herring runs, so if there's a blockage or debris, put that in your comments as well. Thank you.